Welcome back to another UPoker Academy lesson. In this lesson we're going to be talking about board texture. Board texture is defined as the connectedness or unconnectedness of the cards in the flop. A wet flop has lots of suited or connected cards, making hands like suited connectors more valuable. And a dry flop is very disconnected, making hands like top pair more valuable. So if you're making all of your decisions on the basic basis of board texture, you're pretty much getting the point of poker. When a board is dry, most hands are no pair or one pair. There are very few two pair hands and usually no possible straights or flushes. In fact, so many hands are one pair, if you have two pair or better, you have an absolute monster. On the other hand, when a board is wet, your two pair might be a middling hand or it might be an underdog, depending on how much action there is. Every better raise that you see is less likely to be a bluff or a weak hand and is more likely to be a strong hand like a straight or a flush. So let's look at a couple of boards and try to determine whether the board texture is wet or dry. And so for the first example that I always give is this. King 7-2 Rainbow. This is perhaps the driest board that you can get. The only hands that have two pair are King 7, King Deuce, and 7 Deuce. The only hands that have sets are King 7s and Deuces and there are no possible straights or flushes. If you've got a hand like 9-10, you're essentially drawing, I mean, you're drawing to no flush. You can't get the 8 and the jack, and that, that would be the only way to get your straight, and it would be runner-runner for a flush as well. So, on the other hand, you can have a board that looks more like this. And you'll see that a lot too. This is a very wet board. Because you've got lots of hands that are very, very happy with this board. For example, that hand right there. It's a hand that a lot of people play, and when it sees this board, it's ecstatic. Not only does it have the draw at the flush, it's already got top pair, and it's got a draw to straight. A hand that might even be happier on that board would be this they have the draw at the nut flush and the straight and put those two together and you're over 50% to win so let's uh, let's go kind of through the range we saw the wettest and kind of the driest boards that we could there are times when you may think the board texture is a little bit in the middle so something like this um, I mean, it's got low cards, so there are some straight possibilities, but they're hands that people don't usually play. People don't usually play the 3-4 or the 6-8. So while there are possible straights, and there is a possible flush out there, it's a little bit drier than the wet board we saw, and we could make it even drier again if we were to make it something like that. Typically, wet flops have a jack or a queen or even a jack and a queen on them and I consider those to be wetter than average because lots of people play hands with jacks and queens in them. You've got your jack 10, your jack queen, your king jack, your king 10, your king queen, your queen 10, your queen 9 and so on. So lots of hands have jacks and queens in them. If you do catch top pair there, for example if you get a board like this then an opponent who has you know, a queen 10 already has two pair. And an opponent who has queen 9 is just one 9 away from a very disguised two pair. Okay? So how are we going to play on dry or wet boards? That's the next question. So if we have, go back to our standard dry board, something like that. Now, I would say one of the best hands you could have is something like your ace-king. Obviously, you're not looking for the flush or the straight or anything here. You're looking for a great top pair. If you've got ace-king on this board, you are going to bet and bet and bet because you're going to get called by all kinds of hands like that or even something like that. And they're drawing to just three outs. bad hands to have on this board would be things like you know anything like that 
where you're drawing basically dead and for those hands you're most likely just going to check and fold them. So let's look at a little bit of wetter board now, something like this. Well, what if you had a hand like that? How happy would you be playing your 8-7 spades on an 8-6-2 relatively wet board? The answer is not very. So when you do get a hand like this, you're probably going to bet on the flop. And you may bet on the turn, depending on what comes. If something like that comes, you're probably going to slow down and not bet. But if something like that comes, you may continue to bet. Um, and especially if something like that comes. That's definitely going to be an opportunity to keep betting. So you do have maybe one bet on the flop and maybe a bet on the turn. But you're definitely not trying to get all in with something like this. You wouldn't even be trying to get all in with something like this with a top pair top kicker. Because the board's so wet, your top pair top kicker is very, very weak. Where your hand starts getting really good when you do want to start putting money in is with a hand like 8-6 or even something like um, like a 5-7 a where you've got all kinds of straight draws. Um, if you had the 5-7 uh, of hearts, Well, then you would just have an absolute monster. You'd want to get this in on the flop if possible. So, just to recap, let's go back to our dry board. Something like that. A hand like this two fives actually has a little bit of value on a dry flop because chances are nobody hit a hand so you may actually win the pot like that but as soon as we start getting very very wet like something like this your fives actually go significantly down in value and here's why because when you have a wet flop you're gonna have people staying in with you know the drawing hand stuff like eight nine and they're likely going to hit a pair when that pair comes on the Turner River. But on a dry flop, you actually may have the opportunity to bet out on the flop or on the turn and take the pot down before anybody has a chance to catch their hand. So when we are playing with a board like this, we're looking for hands like top two pair. We're looking for sets. We're looking for strong draws. We're not looking for hands that are a seven even though it looks like it might be a good hand, it's actually going to cost you more money in the long run. We're not looking for hands that are um, somewhere in the middle where you're not even drawing to the nuts. Here, if an 8 comes, you're losing to 9, 10. You're not looking to draw to the second nuts here. But you're looking for strong made hands and very strong draws. All right, so that'll cover the uh, U-Poker Academy lesson on board texture. And... I think I will add one more thing, that if you're a little bit more of an advanced player and you made it through this and you were wanting something a little bit juicier to chew on, remember that second level thinking, the idea that our opponents are trying to discern what our hand is. So let's look at our dry flop again. If our opponent bets out, and we don't know what cards he has, but our opponent bets out on this and we have something that makes no pair something like a 9-10 uh, suited we actually have an opportunity to check raise here as a bluff because our opponent is going to see us check raising with big kings and big hands likely uh, he doesn't have very much that he can call that he can call with on the other hand if we go back to our very wet board um, and let's say we don't have something like that we have something like this probably not a good spot to check raise as a bluff uh, wetter boards are more prone to having people call you with draws. So that's a little bit more advanced on how to read your opponent and make your play based on what he's thinking you have. Um, it's important to, if you do check raise this flop, to do it with a strong draw or a strong main hand. So that'll do it for this. Check us out at riskoriented.com or on youtube.com slash Academy. Please do like and subscribe. We definitely appreciate your feedback. Leave comments, whatever. We'll see you soon.